The zombies, finding themselves transported back by their time-traveling capabilities to medieval Europe, find themselves in a world of thieves. Well, the evil lord, Goldface McGee, stands hoping that his palace castle thing will not be invaded. His defendants, an angry group of archers and another angry, equally angry group of archers, supporting angry groups of spearmen, ready themselves for the oncoming zombie hordes. Will they outlast the zombies, or will truth and justice prevail, and will the zombies defeat the evil lord gold armored dude McGee, or whatever his name was? Wait a minute, aren't the zombies the bad guys here, and they're invading with time travel? Hmm. Well, maybe they're extremely anti-bourgeoisie or something, or anti-royalty, whatever that is. Anyways, the zombies advance at their ever slow crawl. Without the help of their skeleton blades this time, they're rather slow. However, it appears that arrows have no effect on zombies, and so they can advance without impetion, as the cliff arrows fire down, not doing much. The spearmen, though, ready themselves with their pointy things, over on the other side, they have already embraced, engaged with the zombie hordes, doing much better than the British soldiers did at repelling zombies, poking them with their spears. Although they seem to fall and turn into zombies, they can sort of keep back the lines slightly. What's this? It appears there has been more British soldiers thrown through time, and they come to take back what is truly theirs, the British motherland. Trying to throw down Gold Lord McGee, stopping in their pan tracks to shoot bullets at soldiers and zombies alike. But McGee did not stand to in his position, defense position. Instead, he goes amongst his archers, shouting encouragement as they fight back against the zombie hordes. The British bullets are quite devastating as they rain against the zombies, and the zombie numbers are ever increasing as they pwn the puny human spearmen. The archers, being ineffective, worry that they might lose this fight. On the other side, the spearmen also seem to be failing to hold off the zombies. Maybe the archers should have spread out more on the cliffs, but instead they are idiots and stood in funny positions. And now the zombies come and start hurting the archers as well. Will the British soldiers be able to overcome the zombies once their bloodlust for medieval men is satiated? Who knows? However, the spearmen are giving it their all and sort of pulled off the zombies It's on one side, but the archers on the other are getting completely overwhelmed. Luckily, they do have the backing of the British soldiers, uh, peppering the zombies with bitter, bitter biting bullets. So the zombies seem confused of which way they should be walking are stuck against the cliffside thinking they can climb up cliff faces. Though, the poor fools. The human, um, medieval men, because they're usually humans, arrows, still have very little effect on the zombies. But now the Lord, being well fed and well nurtured, can absolutely wreck the zombies, swinging a sword and send them flying. Holy cow, he is strong. Can he alone, the evil Lord Gold Pants McGee, hold off the zombie hordes? Apparently not. He got mauled. Although he did do a little bit of damage, the zombies still focused on eating medieval men continue to munch on... Um, what's the alliteration for archers? Um, accurate archers. They're not very accurate though, are they? Um, hmm. Apt archers? Antiquated archers? About to... Die archers and pistolating afterlife archers. Who can say for sure? Oh, they actually got one. Oh, it was a two for three trade. Now the zombies, realizing that there is still a huge army of British soldiers standing in the lake, start coming down the cliffside trying to shoot it, but fight back. British soldiers this time have decided that the thin red line is an ineffective strategy, and they should just stand in a large formation, shooting a massive hail of bolts uphill. It appears to be very effective, too. Look at these zombies. Crawling forwards and falling down. Defeated in almost an instant. Oh, it looks like the sun's setting. Mm. If you stare up at the sun, everything goes dark. Don't look at the sun, kids. It's bad for your eyes. The British soldiers seem to think that the cliff is the best thing to shoot at. And they almost didn't notice zombies creeping up on them from below. However, with a massive jerk in the space-time continuum, 
they re-antiquate themselves with gravity and start firing down lower at the zombies. Um, Nagel toggling. What's this do? Nothing. Uh, maybe if I turn off some magic mode. There we go. Hmm. Well, I think I might put it back to normal. Alright. Well, that was something. Ah, uh, you didn't see that. <laughs> the zombies, although numbers bolstered by medieval meat bags, appear to be no match for superior British firepower. In the future and the past, the British soldiers appear to have machine guns instead of muskets because someone didn't realize how bloody long it takes to reload a musket and fire it again. Dear God above, these men have musket munitions that are massively um, manufactured mightily for most maximum momentum. There we go. Yes. Zombies do not appear to stand a chance against the British onslaught of bullets. Although the British are really inaccurate. Although the bullets actually do sort of go up and fall down. It's kind of weird. They have like bullet physics on. I mean, arrow physics. However, these are musket shots, so maybe their physics is slightly different. Who can say in these strange times? The zombies get rather wrecked by the British soldiers' new strategy of not being idiots. And the British have appeared to have taken over ancient medieval Europe in the world of thieves. Who knows what will happen next? British soldiers from the future take up position in the medieval castle they have now conquered, defending it from whatever evil foes strike forth. Lord Goldpants McGee's, um... Uh, all right. Well then, it's pretty sure he's around here somewhere. Where'd he go? Um, this is embarrassing. Right. Um, riders from the south advance to take back what is rightfully theirs, the castle of Lord Goldpants McGee. Um, there's like a whole army missing from this battlefield. Hello? Oh, there they are! Didn't see you there, Lord Goldpants McGee's cousin, Lord uh, Gold Shirt McGee, also comes with his force of noble footmen to take back the castle from the Red Shirts. However, the zombies are not to be outdone too, stripping themselves. Of their mortal flesh, they advance their forces in full upon the lands. Unfortunately, a accident in the warp travel technology has made it so their forces are very spread out, but perhaps this will be to their advantage. Unsby notes to all upon the battlefield, a lone warrior from the future, the actual far distant future, has arrived somewhere on the battlefield to try to figure out what's going wrong in the space-time continuum. However, he is a stealthy one and cannot be found at the moment. British soldiers deciding instead of trying to hold the position of their castle to advance forth and fire upon the skeleton warriors on the hillside. Some actually do hold. The skeletons get peppered by uh, primitive get peppered by Priv Pepper Pot. I don't know, I can't deliver that. The Outriders advance with all due force speed. Or very little speed, but they advance nevertheless to go take back the castle. Leaving the unsuspecting British soldiers have no idea what's about to hit them. Lord Money Shirts McGee charges towards a soldier from the future. Um, where'd he go? Shooting lasers at him. 
but he is confident that this man is a stormtrooper he's fighting and has no ability to hit him. Skeletons advance on Lord Goldpants McGee's. Instantly killing the soldier from the future, making it so his nexus can never continue, he engages with the skeletons, in giving them his holy raw. Will he survive? Who knows? His soldiers bravely sally forth, trying to defend him from the maniacal horde of skeleton memory. But will they be quick enough to save Lord Goldshirt and his massive swinging sword? Him. As Goldshirt fights on, the British soldiers get overwhelmed by the European ancient medieval cavalry and they meet with skeleton swords swinging forth from the north to fight this, the cavalrymen. Lord Goldpants still holds, it would appear, fighting the skeletons. Oh wait, no, he's dead. But his soldiers fight on for him. And unfortunately, when the Omnis, although gaining greater speed from turning into skeletons, they lose their ability to multiply their numbers, infecting their opponents. The cavalry fight boldly on against the um, benevolent bone men, but they seem to have a problem navigating hills, and weird horse physics causes them to drift across the ground. But they ride forth, nevertheless, to do battle with skeletal skull drudgery. Yes. The skeletons seem to be no match for the outright cavalry men, taking back their homeland. And the footmen overwhelm the skeletal forces. It's usually the other way around. This doesn't feel right. But they appear to just be better fighters than the beggy bones swinging silvery swords at them. The steeded st stout men from the south continue to ride upon the skeleton- Oh my goodness, I feel sick. The skeletal forces from the- Let's see, that was north, that's south. So, east? Never east- Oh, west! The skeletal forces from the west and the future. Although the skeletons also seem rather confused about which way to go and walk back and forth, not being able to decide which cavalrymen to fight. The cavalrymen also seem to have the same issue, causing rather odd problems for them. And no advancement in the battle is actually made as they try to decide which force to fight. However, some cavalrymen decide that the skeletons over here need a beauty. The skeletons actually seem to be holding their own against the um, militia men-at-arms. But who can say for how long? The militia fight boldly on, never fighting the skeletons. Maybe there should be smaller numbers so these battles don't last as long. Oh, that cavalryman's dead. Well, he was a brave one, anyways. My goodness, these cavalrymen seem to know their stuff as they finish off the remaining of the skeleton hordes, leaving the men of the medieval realm victorious. What a magnificent display! of might from the medieval world. Upset that they were invaded from those from the future, they open up a portal of their own to strike back at those who come after them. Medieval men march on the future, led by the cousin of the other two gold fellows, Lord Goldhelm McGee. He has his heavy knights at his back in a great force and some footmen um, so backing him up on the sides. The U.S. Army has deployed to fend the city of somewhere in a desert. Can they hold out long enough to not die? Because they have no reinforcements coming. Can they hold out against the medieval men? But unfortunately for them, it's a war on two fronts. Will they fight the zombies traveling from the war-torn Europe slightly to the future, led by the Supreme Lord, Grunky. The, the new plaid shirt, efficient runner zombies are ready to do battle. Hmm, where are they? I think they're over here. Learning of the death of their comrade, a group of future soldiers from the future 
I've decided to go in force to fight the foes from the past, hoping that they will not be overwhelmed. Who knows what will happen in the battle for this modern world? Will the medieval men show their might? Or perhaps the modern soldiers' munitions will melt the enemy forces? Who can say for sure? Deciding a strikeout tactic of spreading out and advancing, the modern men are kind of deciding to go fight the zombies a bit. While the medieval soldiers charge, it's going to take them quite a while to get into range. Over here, the Doom Lord zombie advances and gets a very nasty hail of bullets directed at him. However, he's quite tough, and the American soldiers seem to be just as bad shots as the British. However, their rate of fire is even increased more. Although those appear to be... Oh, those are machine guns. Okay. That's kind of absurd. The running zombies are fast, but the British soldiers' bullets are not faster, actually. Hmm, this could be bad for them. Yep, it, it, they're getting overwhelmed. Well, America, modern Earth, you did well for a bit. Seems to be doing far better against the maniacal march of the medieval men. The Lord Goldhelm leading the charge dies, as always. The soldiers from the future are dead. All right, well then, the medieval men mash through, mash through the modern-day soldiers well getting mashed themselves by the mighty bullets, although the heavy reinforcements are incoming. Who can say we'll hold out for sure? Well, that happens. A massive horde of mighty zomble runners advance upon the soldiers unaware in the conflict. They will not turn their backs. Oh, one does. Not be decides it's better to just keep shooting this mass of metal mightily marching for their faces with swords. Um, I gotta stop it with these. Oh, yep. The one soldier decides to turn, but it's not fast enough. And the American forces sent to defend the modern city fall. The medieval men fight gallantly against the zombies in plaid shirts, knowing that a faith worse from death awaits them if they die, or they themselves shall be forced to wear the plaid shirts in eternity. The zombie reinforcements, however, are coming, and the medieval men don't seem to be able to hold out long enough against the army of bald zombies in plaid with all the same face injury but slightly different shirts. Although they're giving a pretty good show. If they like maybe spread out a little they could hold up there. But no, the reinforcements have arrived and the zombies fight on with the might of a thousand zombies as the maniacal Monster of a man, zombie thing, marches ever onwards towards his hopeful demise. Will the medieval men hold out against the zombies of plaid shirt them? It appears they might. But who knows for sure? The future, though, or the modern world, seems to have new rulers in place. Medieval men are monstrous. Monstrosities of zombies. And he engages. The medieval men fight him, hoping to kill him before he can spread his plague, and they succeed. It would have been really bad if he got his plague out there because I made him freaking OP when I was making a custom unit, and he would have just wrecked everyone. I mean, my goodness, if that had spread, that would have been really bad. I made that zombie way too overpowered and didn't realize the consequences until now. The medieval men seem to actually be fighting, though, mightily. Why is there so many M's? This medieval men, monstrous zombies. Is there like a Z thing for zombies? Like, Zephyrus zombies? Medieval men are actually are doing pretty good against the zombies, though. I guess heavy armor knights are very good at fighting off um, plaid shirted zombies. Although they are sort of starting to gain surrounded, except it's like surrounding them two fronts. It's kind of like a yin yang sort of surrounding dealy go up. Nope, nope, never mind. The knights are just taking out down the zombies. And they're heavily armored amounts. My word. These poor zombies don't stand a chance of those remaining. Although they might drop a few more metal men, it doesn't seem likely for their future. And it appears that the medieval people have conquered 
the world and the Golden Knights team is victorious upon the battlefield. What will the future hold? Find out next time on the um, silly battles of the on the mighty magnificent battles of modern day Murph. <laughs>